Welcome back, man. Welcome back, Ashley Knuckle Faithful. Got a UFC 271 recap. So, Saturday night was something else, huh, boys? It was fantastic. It was a pretty good night of fights there. Good run back. Yeah. Got, we had some some good moments, some crazy unexpected moments, and then some things that, you know, kind of went as planned, I guess, if you um if you saw it happening already. Um let's talk about a little bit about like um the the early prelims and some of the action from the early prelims. We know William Knight didn't make weight, so that ended up being a heavyweight bout. Uh, Max Grisham ended up taking the victory. What are your thoughts on some of these? Um, some of the early fights. Any anybody um impress you? Um, nothing too too impressive to me. I mean, Martinez had a comeback almost of the ages after getting destroyed for two rounds. He almost got a finish in multiple ways in the third. That was kind of impressive. Oh, yeah. What a turnaround. That was a – he was getting um, baked in that first – those first two rounds. Yes, sir. And he almost got the finish in the third. So, Mano Martinez showed some some art. Wasn't enough, though. Um, Ronnie Lawrence ended up getting the the victory, but that was a damn good scrap. Auto – also, Adesanya's boy, Blood Diamond, kind of got uh, starched in the first by submission. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremiah Wells um, put on the show, man. It's interesting, like, when you see some of these these matchups in, like, the early prelims, is um, usually a couple guys who have a little bit of steam built up, but it's rarely a, a big name. And we saw a lot of fights get moved up, like that started off as early prelim and prelim cards. I mean, prelim uh, fight slots, and they got moved to either the main card or the prelims. Um, some some fights got scratched all together. Well, one in particular, but yeah, I was I was really impressed um, by the, the whole card. I mean, the the whole lineup. I really didn't feel like there was a boring fight on either one, either, either one, um, either one of the preliminaries. They were all like entertaining, and then to the main prelims, you know, that's when we find a cancel bout with Alex Perez and um, Matt Now, did they ever say why it was canceled? Was it wait? COVID. Mm, it just says canceled on the website. Um, that was one of the fights I was, you know, I was looking forward to that. And when other guys started, ooh, oh, excuse me, damn. When other guys started making a walk to the cage, I was like, uh oh, what's up, man? What's going on with this fight? And then I saw it on the website, it just said cancel. Yeah, I think that was the weight discrepancy one. I'm not 100% sure which one missed weight, but the other declined. Dang. Yeah, I mean, didn't, didn't, uh, the, the William Knight fight, didn't he miss like by like 13 pounds or something crazy? It got moved to heavyweight. Yeah, that was a 12 pound miss, but they agreed upon a heavyweight bout instead of a catch weight. Did he still he lose get, his uh, purse for uh, doing that? Some of his money? No. Since they moved the division, he no longer missed weight. Really? I thought he surrendered 40% of his purse. If they would have kept it as a light heavyweight fight and his opponent didn't accept the heavyweight fight, then yes, he would have had to get rid of his purse. Give up 40% of his purse. Interesting. So they didn't... I th- yeah, I miss, maybe I misread that. I thought um, they were moving it to heavyweight, but he was still being um, docked 40%. But I could be wrong. Maybe I just um, saw 40% and ran with it. Um. Yeah, this, this, I thought this, some of the action from this. Um, I was I was impressed actually from a lot of the um these fights on the actual prelims. Mo, you got any takes? 
prelims. Uh, the one I paid the most attention to was the <laughs> retirement fight of Roxanne Modafferi. She didn't do too hot, but she went out on her shield. Even though she didn't go out, she hung in there. Going to be uh, different without a veteran such as her. Yeah. I mean, she paved the way for a lot of female fighters. So uh, she had this in an era where um, a lot of female fighters, especially the notable um, successful ones, are... um, she was just herself, not being like a model on the side or anything like that. She just, you know, was her her regular, you know, quirky, nerdy self mixed in with being an awesome martial artist and having a, a very strong career in, um, in the UFC. So Roxanne Modafferi will be missed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she was an OG. She was... A very unorthodox fighter, and you got to give her props on this fight, too, even though it didn't look the greatest for her. She did go to a split decision somehow, split decision, uh, with an undefeated fighter that has nothing but finishes in the UFC, and she was not finished, and she got a couple good shots in with her unorthodox striking, but this most definitely was a passing of the torch, and she saw it that way given that she walked out as All Might during the weigh-ins. <laughs> <clears throat> Casey O'Neill, is, uh, she looks like the real deal. Mata Ferry, that, that was a, a tough out. I mean, uh, Roxanne just kept coming forward, even though she was taking a lot of, a lot of clean shots. Um, Casey O'Neill seems to be that next up in, like that riser, that's fast riser in women's flyweight. She keeps piling on wins, and we'll be talking about her um, and her name attached to chasing gold soon. I was impressed by Kyler Phillips, too, taking on uh, Marcelo Rolo. I thought Kyler Phillips, looks, he looked really good. Nice bounce back, third-round submission victory. He I, Kyler put he threw out the kitchen sink. Man, I'm talking about, like, every possible strike – you can throw. I think he landed it in that fight. So uh, shout out to Kyler Phillips. Yeah, he definitely showed his uh, depth that he has in his fighting game in that fight. He he wanted to show all the tricks in his bag, and he definitely did. Very dominant fashion too. He was the good fight for him. The most favorite out of all the bets. I think he had the biggest favorite. I think he was the biggest favorite. Yeah, minus four thirty-five according to the OC website. Yeah, that was that was probably the biggest. I think the the next highest was in the the well the high threes. So yeah, I mean, he, <clears throat> it's a good, good good win to bounce back after you know he took a loss. I think it was uh, Paiva was his last fight, and mm-hmm. Bantamweights, you know, right? Correct. Yes. Sir. So, mm-hmm. I mean, speaking of Brandon Wade, Sean O'Malley was in attendance, so I'm pretty sure that um, these guys are going to meet up soon. They'll meet up somewhere down the line if um, they both continue, especially if Kyler Phillips continues to win. <clears throat> um, Fabio Chirant and Carlos Olberg. I saw that fight and uh, on the card, and <clears throat> my only question was, uh, can Carlos survive the the early explosion of uh, Fabio? Because he seems to be uh, like that. Like he doesn't have like anything past the first. Like if you survive the first, you're good. That's what it seems in his uh, his pretty young career. He's only has uh, seven and four, so. But he's he's a powerhouse, and in his victories, he's usually just putting people out pretty quickly. And in his losses, it seems to be like um, his opponents tend to drag him in the deeper water, and he, he fades. Do you see? Did you see uh, much of the same from that one in his, in his little three round decision, light heavyweight thing, Mark? 
be honest, I didn't really pay attention to that one too much. I think I was trying to find food at the time. <laughs> Mo, Mo, did you see this one? Yeah, he he did what he was expected to, Olberg. But he also, yeah. I believe the last time I seen him fight, he ran out of gas himself towards the end of the first round and the beginning of the second round. I think that was his last loss, or his only loss. He gassed out. Yeah. So it was a little bit both, more patient this time. Yeah. They're both really inexperienced. I mean, between them, I mean, well, uh, Oberg has, has seven fights and, you know, 11 for Fabio. So going to these three round decisions, even though it's not the finish that we all kind of hope for, it's, it's good for these guys to get some time in the cage. Speaking of time in the cage, this next this next dude got all the time in the cage, man. Uh, Andre Ovlowski, how does he keep doing it, bro? Is he immortal? You know, it seems to be. I think he's on what a four fight, five fight winning streak now. No, four fight winning streak. Three. I'm sorry, I already counted this one. So three fight winning streak, but still three fight winning streak in the heavyweight division. At his age, what is he, 43. He's 43 and still on a three-fight winning streak in the heavyweight mm. division, taking all the heat and all the fucking heavy hits. That's just impressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's def- definitely. I, I look, When I saw um, Andre on a ticket, I was like, I got to tune in and check this out because, one, it's one of my favorite fighters and one of the guys I watched, you know, he's been in the game, what, 20 years now? And I've p- pretty much seen most of his action. Andre's tough, man. He's seen the highs and the lows of the sport, been champion before, been on some, you know, funky streaks, going downward. And I'm I'm glad to see him, you know, getting that, that, that win streak going. And with this – We'll talk about the heavyweight division a little bit more um, once we get to the the main card. We got some spicy action on there, but man, like I'm thinking of now, like with this, the UFC's um, heavyweight division, they 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 weren't out of uh, contenders for the belt. If you know what I mean, like got some guys are that are in the top five aren't competing or. That they're losing. So, who knows? Can Andre make a late run and maybe get another title shot? Win maybe three, or two or three in a mo- two or three, and get a shot. Depends on who he fights. Yeah, I think he'll get a increase in competition soon, but it depends on how he fares there. I love the man. He's been around since 1999, so that's almost 23 years now fighting. And But I, I don't know if he can actually make it in the top five. So it, it to be seen, but um, the original pit bull, I mean, he has the – he's been there before. He's been to the top of the mountain before, so it'll be interesting to see what, what comes with him next. Um, mm-hmm. Now, the main card – all that was good. This was like a fan. This is a dream for me as a fan. I think every fight was really either really exciting or at least um, it lived up to the booking. Speaking of um, living up to the hype, Bobby Green, man, riding the wave right now. Took on um, Nasrad Hack, Hack Perest. Uh, and the lightweight ball to open it up the card. Man, talk about a boxing clinic. Damn. Bobby yeah. Green looked really good. He opened up a school Saturday night and just gave his first lesson. And Jesus Christ, it was just a constant flow. And he just murdered. Who do you think he gets after that win? Top 15, dude? Or you think he'll fight somebody else that's not ranked? See the rankings. Hmm. That's a good question, Mo. Because lightweight, lightweight is deep. Very deep. Unlike 
unlike heavyweight, even if you once you break into that top 15, you're talking about all those guys can be competing for um, the top spot. Like, mm-hmm. they, all they need is a streak. Just go on, you know, pop off four or five wins and, you know, cut the right sound bites and you're in there. Because these are everybody in the top 10, even the top 15, are really, really talented in that lightweight division. I like to see what I would like to see is, I mean, since Bobby has some time under his belt, is to see him go get some of the other OGs at 155. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad thing. He has some notable wins on his record. He has he doesn't have anyone top ten on his record right now, but he has some notable names from his his past and good wins. So he should he's more than deserving of a top fifteen opponent to see where he actually lands, especially after a display like that this weekend. Yeah. And even some of his losses, I mean, he has some decision losses that you can shake your head at a little bit, scratch your head a little bit. And one of the most promising fighters we'll see coming up next in this, um, well, coming up soon in the Battle of Rafael's with um, Rafael Fizayev, uh, Bobby Green, and I mean, Bobby Green and Bobby, uh, Bobby and Rafael's fight was amazing. And Fizayev has been making everybody else look. Um, like pretty bad. He's been like running through everybody else. His fight with Bobby Green, you know, it ended up being a really, really entertaining fight, which uh Bobby got Bobby ended up getting a loss though. But um so and that's a guy that's in it's surging up the top of the lightweight division. So hmm. I'm not sure like I don't have the ma- I don't have the names in front of me right now. But I'm thinking I would love this. I know off the top of my head as a fan, some of the fights that I would like to see. I just don't know how that would line up as far as rank and then consideration for the rest of the guys, uh, like maybe title aspirations. But I would love to see him and Tony Ferguson. Oh, you want him all the way up in the top 10 already? Yeah, I feel like um, book, book, does Tony have a fight booked at all? Rumors. Uh, yeah, rumors. I don't think there's anything official. Chandler. Okay. Supposed to be Chandler, okay. I believe. It's like a rumor, mm-hmm. though. Yeah. i like to see Tony get back in the win column. I would like to see him get back in the in the game. I don't know how much more he wants to what he wants to do and how much more he wants to go, but I'm with him as long as he's in. So I'd honestly like to see Bobby Green go for like a Brad Rydell or a Gregory Gillespie. Okay. Yeah. Like, I think either one of those are good wins. I think they're decent matchups for him that will show his uh, his prowess. And I think those are good matchups for him. I like the Brad Riddell matchup a lot. Yeah, that puts him in the top 15 at least. Yeah. That's that's a really good one. So, Mo, you have anything? you have anybody? I like uh, Brad Riddell with him. That should be a good uh, striking matchup. Some good stuff with that one. You might have to watch yeah. the uh, head kicks, though. Yeah. Do you think... Is that head movement he had? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying that head movement he had was amazing. So, he might just matrix that shit. Yeah, I think he... That strategy was simply because Nazareth's, like, mostly uh, punch-heavy. In his, in his offense, he doesn't throw a ton of kicks. And a lot of it, I think, was to bait him into just swinging because he kept his hands really low and would just kind of like roll with the strikes. It did a really good job with it. Um, Speaking of guys who had like some hype behind them, this fight got moved up. Um, The fight between Alex, Alexander Hernandez and Hanato Moicano, two guys who have... um. Put together some streaks, made some noise, um, and both kind of faced some, you know, some setbacks on that way to the top of the mountain. What'd you think of this fight? Hey, wait a minute. Why don't they fight each other? The winner of each of these fights. They're both not ranked. Ooh. 
you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm even, I'm even with the losers fighting each other too. I like uh, Moicano versus Bobby Green, and I would love to see Hernandez and Nazrat. Yeah, those are both good matchups. I'd be, I'm more excited for that Moicano versus Bobby Green. Both are on kind of like a comeback tour right now, so that's not bad at all. See who deserves the actual top 15 ranking. Have them go against each other, and winner gets a ranking fight. <laughs> yeah, it, I, it can, and it can, it can definitely happen. Given that um, they're on the same card, so they'll have the the, same, the, t- the amount of time in between um, medical suspensions to get booked again. So I, I'm I'm for it. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like when they have cards that are stacked like this. When they have, you know. Um, multiple contenders from the same weight class on the exact same card. I think um it, it can lead to some like some natural um tournament style matchups. You know like you advance, you advance, <coughs> meet up. Barring any injuries, obviously this is the hurt business. But what about this fight in particular? Do you see anything like that, you know, stood out? Something maybe you didn't expect? Or business as usual? Hernandez needs more. Uh, I don't know. I think he he might need different matchups. Uh, I don't know. I was gonna say I expected Hernandez to do a little bit better than he did. To be honest, I thought this was a pretty evenly matched up fight, but it didn't seem that way in the end. Moicano seemed like the old Moicano that had all the hype behind him, and he like he came back and he's ready to take over again. Yeah, that combination Moicano landed in the second round to put Hernandez down and force him into an emergency wrestler was was nice. That was mm-hmm. nice. Doubled up on the right hand, um, caught him, came back with the left hook, caught the right hand again, put him down. I was like, damn, Moicano looks sharp here. And I don't know if um Maybe it might be something like because Alexander to me seems to be physically talented, like athletic, explosive, has the moves. Maybe it's something that like maybe there's some mental stuff that gets in the way. Maybe a little bit too much by a little bit too much too much into his own hype because it seems like the moment he starts to get these like some steam and he talks a little bit of trash, then like this happens. And I know like the trash talk culture for MMA is big now because you gotta. You gotta kind of market yourself, so you gotta say something to make the reporters want to write about you and put you in the news. But then it goes against you when you lose. You know what I mean? And then this is the second time this kind of happened to Alexander with uh, first time being cowboy, and this one not so bad. It wasn't so. Um, he was yeah. He wasn't like the, against cowboy. He was talking crazy shit. He was retiring them and like. Call him geriatric and all this shit. Moicano was a little more, was much more tame, but still, um, he still got Alexander still young. Got like you know, he only has eighteen fights. So, hey man, Moicano might be, he might be on the rise. I'm just looking over his losses. I remember three of them: uh, Korean Zombie, Aldo, and Ortega. That's all top contenders at featherweight. Then mm-hmm. he lost uh, Rafael Faziv in 2020. That was his last mm-hmm. loss, given it was a while ago. He's only fought twice since then. He loses to top-notch competition. Yeah, yeah. one of the best. The only, guy, the only guy on that list that isn't a title contender or champion is Fizayev, and he's surging right now. So um, maybe Moicano might be better at like better off, a better fit for him personally at lightweight instead of trying to drop down that extra ten pounds and make um featherweight. So he might be just better off. We see that a lot with guys moving up in weight and being not only more competitive, but some even ascending to champion yeah. after that after not cutting weight. And we'll definitely talk about some of those guys um coming up next, but um, 
Speaking of a well, here's a guy who went down in weight who's been having some crazy success. Uh, Jared Cannonier went from heavyweight to middleweight. And if you saw him at heavyweight and middleweight, it's almost two different people. You know what I mean? It is two different people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like an 80 pound difference. Oh Oh my God. It's weird. It's almost strange to to think that that, that's the same guy. But uh, this version of Jared Cannonier, I guess this is Jared's final form. At middleweight, <laughs> this man's jacked to the fucking gills, and like he looks more sharp in his striking. Which he's all, he's always had KO power. He's always had the ability to put the ability to put his opponents away, even at heavyweight. But um, the move to middleweight, he's seen you know a lot of success. He's seen some hiccups against Top Comp. I mean, we saw what Robert Whitaker was able to do in their matchup on his first. Um, surge toward the title, um, but he bounced back. You know, got the win. Got the win versus Calvin. Look, extremely impressive in this matchup against Blonde Brunson. Mo, what's your take on this fight? Did you, I mean, going in, we all had our feelings about it, but did your opinion change after watching this one? My opinion about Cannoneer it still stayed the same. He's very dangerous. He could put you away instantly. He did. Survived the first round from almost getting subbed. That could have been Brunson's uh, time to shine. Could have been. Could have got that rematch with Izzy, but Cannoneer survived, and now we got uh, new meat, as Izzy calls it. Mm, 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 mm. Mark, what about you? What'd you think? I mean, cause I, I thought, wait, hold on. If I remember correctly, didn't you. You really wanted – you thought Brunson had this one, right? I did. I did think Brunson had this one. And to be honest, the Brunson of the first round was going exactly how I expected him to go. You know, he was mixing it up. He was being calculated. He was throwing in his takedowns and his heavy on the wrestling against Cannoneer, and I thought that's how it was going to go. The one thing I did not account for, though, was Brunson in the second round was so gassed that he turned into old Brunson, just looping everything, just rushing in and with, like, I just got to finish this now because I can't take another round. So he impressed me in the first round and did exactly what I thought he was going to do. Second round, old Brunson got defeated. And that's what we all kept saying. New blonde Brunson wins this fight. Old Brunson gets destroyed. And we saw both. I was uh, very impressed with Blom Brunson's um, strategy, well, corrections to his strategy, <clears throat> excuse me, um, doing his streak. Um, mm-hmm. kept, his chin, kept his chin down, uh, no wild lunging stuff, like lunging left hands, and which is, he got some highlight reel knockouts by doing that. But against top comp, it's, it's just going to lead to more disaster than it's going to be um, glorious for sure. Cannonier looked impressive. He looked strong. And damn, he landed some nasty shots. I know Derek's corner threw in the towel, but I don't think uh, it would have mattered, man. Derek, he, he, J- Jared, that, that, look, I know we aren't going to give him a ton of credit against Izzy. I know he's going to open up as a really big underdog. We'll get to there. For- we'll get to there. But I can I think I think he's a legitimate uh, threat to the title. In my, uh, I mean, I think he has a shot. He has more of a shot than meets the eye. I mean, if you look at all the measurable stuff, obviously advantage Adesanya. But I, for some, I listen, we've seen crazy upsets before. We've seen things in the past where it looked like it's so stacked against the challenger, yet they somehow become champion. Like we saw it with, like I said before, um, Matt Sarah taking on uh, <clears throat> George St. Pierre. Like it looked like an insurmountable task for Sarah, yet he was able to get the TKO victory. Same as with Amanda Nunes taking on Juliana Pena. It looked like Amanda would just be business as usual, walk her over, but she had other plans. And I think Jerry might have other plans, dog. We'll see, but we, we will see. 
Um, speaking of having other plans, man, t- how about Bam Bam Tui Vasa just spoiling Derek's homecoming in Houston? Second one. Sheesh. Should Derek just stop fighting in Houston? Absolutely. Or, or should he start fighting in Houston more to get his get a better record at home? I don't know how I feel about that, like, right now, just because, you know, Derek Brunson was doing everything right in that first round. That first round, he was doing everything right. He was controlling the pace. He was dominating. He, he fucking decided he was a wrestler all of a sudden and was doing some beautiful takedowns, some inside trips that no one ever saw coming. And even to Avasa. He sat there with a surprised look on his face when he was on his back. But I think this was just more or less survivability won the night. Hey, man, <clears throat> the best ability is availability. Mm-hmm. Um, no. Derek Lewis did show a little bit of that, that um, All-American Derek. He, he talks about so much. I mean... Man pulling out some wrestling and show a little bit of jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, Mosey, <laughs> you really, you really uh, hoping for that Derek Lewis sub, man? Hey, <laughs> that would have been something, wouldn't it have been? <laughs> yeah, I, I almost was, happened, man. If, bro, if you, if you would have got that one right, man, that would have broke that. Should have broke it, bro. I think that would have played a lotto right after. Oh, for sure. Hell yeah! Look. Uh, Ty, like like Mark said, the survivability of Ty was probably what won the day because he ate some shots that would have put most people on the planet to sleep. Like those three shots he ate in transition. Then he, he got an uppercut. He ate like a clean uppercut, right? Clean he uppercuts, ate- four on the ground to the side. Like he was downed opponent and getting hammered with some heavy shots. Yeah, on one of Derek's takedowns, um, on the way back up, Ty was Ty ate like three or four shots, like one to the temple, one to the nose, one to the jaw. And this is usually shots that put opponents away for Derek. I mean, he wasn't able to land anything like that on Gon. He wasn't able to land um shots like that against Francis in the first fight, in the only fight. But in every fight besides that, when he's hit people. In that same situation, we watching him pound his chest and hump the cage. Ty had other plans. The elbow in the clinch was muy Ty rific. Yeah, that <clears throat> one was nasty. That was that was beautiful. Yeah, it was amazing. Put Derek Lewis of all people face down, ass up. Yep. Bro, he even had his thumb in the air saying he's okay. That boy said he finished on his face, <laughs> just like your mama. He had his booty in the air. He had his booty in the air. <laughs> so, a quick that- question Do you think <clears throat> that that survivability comes from all the drinking that Chewie does? He's just used to being drunk at this point, so he can still react? Maybe. Um, I feel like. With toughness, it's one of those uh, attributes, especially when you're young. Ty has 15, well, sorry, he has 18 total fights. I think that's one of those attributes that when you're young and you're learning, it's a great thing to have, to have a good chin and be able to withstand damage and keep going. I think toughness is one of those things that you need at times. You don't want to lean on that, though. You don't want to rely on being known for having... I mean, not known for, but like rely on winning by surviving huge shots with your chin and then taking a victory. But it's something that um, it's like a seatbelt. Like when you need it, it's good that you have it. You know what I mean? But I don't know if it's a drinking. I think he's just. I think he just built. Got a. He's built solid, man. Built for tough. I don't know. He took some shots with Mark Hunt. I saw some sparring footage. With um Ty Tuivasa sparring with Mark Hunt, and he was taking some shots from Mark Hunt, and we know um Mark and Derek to be KO kings in the heavyweight division. So 
Shout out to Ty, man. That man got a, a I guess his his chin rating in UFC should go up. Like whatever his rating is for chin. If it's an 87 overall, that shit should go to like a 95 or 96 overall. Yeah. I wish the the rankings were updated because I'm I'm interested to see how high he will climb with that that win. He's on a long. I mean, streak. just beat. He's on a yeah. good streak and he just beat number three. Yeah. I don't know if he'll end up at three, but it'll definitely jump him up into the top ten at the very least. I don't see anything less than the top five for Ty, and he, here's why. If you look at two years ago, Ty Tui Vasa two years ago, he was struggling. Like, he was coming off the heels of some L's. Mm-hmm. If you look back just two years ago. And since then, he's done nothing but look impressive. Um, But right now, beating Derrick Lewis in the way he beat Derrick Lewis, knocking him out in that fashion, in that way, after surviving and doing it in Derrick's backyard, I feel like um, Ty should be in that top five and really looking at a couple of fights away from a title because he's new blood in the division, really. I mean, doesn't have any matchups with the current contenders. I mean, he hasn't fought Gon, no Steve Bay fight, no Ngannou fight, obviously. So he's the new dog on the yard. Derek Lewis has had two title shots already, and Ty just beat, beat him, which just knocked him out. So he has to take a big jump to me. And then he's also got, you know, the shoey marketability. Yeah, I agree with that. I just didn't think it would be all the way to number three. Like, I, I think he'll be seven to four. It's a little hard, hard to hard. put him at, put him at, in front of Curtis Blades, though. No, I don't. I don't think he should go and jump jump Curtis. But I think he should be in the, at that five spot. At the five spot, and you think yeah. that drops Derek down to what? Out of the top five. Out of the top five completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is um, <clears throat> this is two in a row for Derek, right? I mean, he had the gone fight. No, he beat. Oh no, Dawkins. wait. He beat Dawkins. You know mm-hmm. what? I don't know why I always overlooked that one. Maybe it was so quick. You're right, though. It was just like a few months ago, too. That's what I yeah. mean. Like quick in <clears throat> turnaround time and quick in bout duration. Yeah. It was it was like that. So my bad, D. I didn't mean to show you like that, bro. I just I just um really I'm thinking about like what are the options for Ty now going forward because um the guys like there's three heavyweights that don't have a dance partner at the very top. I mean, well, technically speaking, four if you count the champion. Champion's gonna be out for a while. He got the knee surgery. Right and contract disputes, so and contract issues. We got Stepe who ha- doesn't have anything booked. Um, newcomer Jones hasn't had a fight yet, nothing booked. Then you have Gon who's coming off the loss to um, Ragley Knee Francis, NCAA Francis, John Fitch Francis, and he got no fight booked. The only two we, the only two at the top we have is Dawkins and Curtis Blades. We said Curtis Blades is number four, and he's on that short list too of guys who could be, you know, competing for the title. He's got something Even, coming up, right? Who he's Blades? supposed to have yeah. something coming up, but it's not listed on the or the UFC website. Not that that's super reliable. <laughs> wait, wait, you mean you you saying Curtis does Curtis Blades have something coming up? Yeah, he he got Chris Dawkins, right? Isn't that the isn't that the, isn't that the fight that got booked for um for one of the fight night cards headliner? I believe so. I yeah, believe last, you're right. Also, wait, maybe hmm, because I know we have Volkov versus um, Aspinall. Yep, that's the UK one. That's mm-hmm. the UK one. Garzinio's fighting uh, Marcin Tybura. Tybura. Hmm. 
Yep. And then Aspinall, Volkov. Hmm. Interesting. So they can give uh, Serial against Tai Tuovasa? Because you know he's going to jump up really high into the rankings. I would expect that. I would expect him to jump pretty high in the rankings. And then I just, like I said, like, who who is the opponent now? Because, I mean, Don is still going to be one of the top guys in the division. And if, you, if you're talking about Ty challenging for the title, um, a fight, a win over a guy like Gon does give him that um, that direct path. A also, loss to someone like Gon, though, cuts that hype down pretty hard. I mean, it's heavyweight, well, though, so recovery from that's easy. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what it is. That's, all, that's what it is at this point, though, for anybody yeah. trying to climb the ladder. You got, you got to risk it. You gotta, you gotta risk. You're risking the loss. Yeah, while it would be devastating, the win puts you right there. You gotta have it. it, it, it you won't have any fights that won't be that way. I mean, any loss yeah. at this point will knock the steam out. The winners get wings, man. Everybody else, mm-hmm. you get the bones and what's left. So, I don't, I don't know. I thought I thought I saw. I don't know where, but I'm pretty sure. I saw Dawkins versus uh, Blades. I'm not sure if that was official or rumor, though. I mean, that makes sense, too, because who does Curtis Blades really fight right now? The best fight or matchup for him would be uh, Stipe, but I honestly think that with Francis going through his surgeries and everything, the only fight to make for Stipe right now is either Gone or John Jones. Yeah. That Gone fight lost a lot of steam. Jones makes the most sense because it, it, it will give him, obviously, a direct path. Either guy a direct path of victory to the title. I mean, either guy winning, they'll be right there in the uh, title talks. If not, dude, that could be that could easily be an interim if Francis can't go for a while. Because they made Gon versus uh, Lewis in interim, and Francis fought three months before that. Mm-hmm. Definitely so, interim. I think it's yeah. definitely an interim too. Yeah. Personally, I think it's going to be an interim to actual champ turning into actual champ. Yeah, kind of like I'm with. Still, um, oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say it's kind of like the same thing with Aldo and um, Frankie Edgar, right? Yeah. I I honestly think that um, what's his name Francis is probably going to end up leaving the company. I I hope not. I hope not. I hope that that's not the case. Although I would like to see them um those that matchup. I do want to see Steve Bay versus Jones, and eventually um I want to see Francis versus Francis versus Jones. Um, and I would be intrigued to even see a Steve Bay in Gano three. You know, like all the there's a lot of fights that I still want to see. Francis have in the UFC, including I, I would love to see him against Ty Tuivasa now. Like, I didn't think Tuivasa could um, take those kind of shots and still, you know, get the victory, get the knockout mm-hmm. win. Now I'm curious to see what he can do against Francis now. No, I love the matchups. Don't get me wrong or whatever. I'm just from previous conversation, I think – the best move for Francis is probably to leave from previous conversation because I don't think that the UFC is going to come to terms with him. But yeah, other than that, that's why I'm saying I, I think he'll probably leave, and I hope he does, and I hope he goes and gets that huge payday. And then <clears throat> we'll talk about returns or whatever after that. Oh, yeah. Well, speaking of huge paydays, um, Israel Adesanya signed a new fight deal right before this um, Robert Whitaker fight, and he seemed very pleased with his deal, um, as opposed to some other champions that aren't so happy with theirs. I know this is a case by case thing, and obviously, um, Izzy's a superstar, so his treatment by uh, his treatment and negotiation power, he might have a little bit more um, say in 
exact terms of how his contract can go, given that he's super marketable and he's this uh he's a bona fide superstar. He's probably the biggest star currently in the UFC. Man, um you 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 know they can market Francis so good if they chose to. They got I, everything they need. Oh, I hundred percent agree. I think that um it's not for me it's not necessarily about marketing. It's more about just um, negotiation, negotiating power. And I, I think, this is what I think the UFC, how do they view Francis? I think they review him as just replaceable. Whereas yeah. I don't think they see Izzy as replaceable. They might see, they see Izzy as like a bona fide star, whereas Francis is just, um, they can do, they can, they can, the things they can do with they can do with Francis, they can do with Ty to Ivasa. Yeah. And that's I, I, this is how they see it. They don't see it as he's not particularly special, which is blows my mind. Like I don't um I don't see the same thing, obviously. Um if you just look at Francis, the last fight he had against Gone, like he turned into a wrestler. He displayed like skills that he didn't show before. I mean, he showed Improvement in wrestling versus Stipe, but he was an offensive wrestler and grappler against Gon when he needed to be. And it, you know, you like to see that evolution from your from your champions, especially um, a guy that doesn't have that much experience. Like, I mean, Francis has only been in MMA for what six years, something like that. Not long, yeah, not long uh, at all. So he's still developing skills. As, I mean, if you look at his, even his, in his highlight wins, he's just knocking people's block off. It's not anything technical or, um, you know, groundbreaking. I mean, he's gotten a lot better since the Jarzinho rolling strike windmill punches. And he, he said he got you know, clipped in the, the back of his ear or something. That's why it looked like the way it was looking. That's what he claims. Oh, um, Francis said that? Yeah. He said nobody noticed him getting hit in the back of the ear. I didn't even mm. look to see if it's true, but that's what he says. I feel yeah. like that happens in a lot of fights, but it all depends on intent. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. No, I'm saying I, I believe him, too, because I feel like it happens in a lot of fights. I feel like that's a common occurrence. Every time you see a head kick, it's behind the head. It's the back of the head. Like your foot wraps around, your your shin wraps to the back. So, mm-hmm. well, <clears throat> his contract talks are going to be always a hot topic um, around the heavyweight division because it's it's the champion is going to be his his status is incomplete right now. It's still mm-hmm. in the air, and he's the champ. Um, but that's not true for Izzy. Izzy just signed a new deal. Um, got a rematch versus Robert Whitaker. Robert being, you know, one of the top. I think he, in my opinion, he's literally like one B in middleweight. I've always felt this way. Um, it, in the pre-fight shots, I felt the same way. I thought this fight would pretty much go how it went. I thought Robert would look much more impressive. But um, Mo, what did you think? Or watching this fight, did you, did you did you live up to? What you expected, or it's what I expected, but I was expecting Robert Whitaker to do what he did in the later rounds earlier. But it, he might have just had to figure out the timing and everything, because I'm pretty sure it's not the same as the last time they fought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I rewatched this fight, and I'm actually more impressed with what I thought with Robert Whitaker. And less impressed with Adesanya in this fight, to be honest. I still think that the decision's not a robbery. I like, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a robbery of a decision. I think it was a really close fight. I think that the only problem I have with the decision is that I think two of them gave Adesanya four rounds, which I think is impossible. Uh, I think at the very least it was three to two, and I think. There is an argument that could be made that Robert Whitaker could have had three to two in this fight. But the reason why I'm impressed with Robert Whitaker is because in the first round was his worst round. And 
that's when he was the most aggressive. What everyone kept wanting to say or get from him was the more aggression that he needed to throw out more combinations. He needed to throw his right hand more. He was only throwing the left jab was a lot of the criticism, but he was doing that in the first round and he kept getting caught and countered. That's what kept happening. So he adjusted in the second round and you started seeing him move in with the left jab. He would, he, he started getting in a little bit with the left jab, realizing that was working and he started doubling up on it. He started doubling up on the left jab, and it was getting him to where he needed to be. And then he would throw a little bit of a combination, maybe a leg kick in there. But then he'd get out of the way before he got caught with anything. So game plan-wise, he was doing quite impressive. And then the thing I saw with Adesanya that I found less impressive is most of his point scoring was nothing but leg kicks. Like, all all he really did most of the fight was a lot of leg kicks, just keeping distance. The actual strike metrics for every round is only off by, like, one or two in any round other than round one. They're right there next to each other, close, close uh, striking-wise. So... I'm quite impressed with what Robert Whitaker did in this fight. It was a very tactical fight. May not have looked the flashiest, but it was a very, very tactical fight. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of that. Um, I think Whitaker was impressive. Um, he did a lot to make this fight in a way. I, I thought the way Rob could potentially win was he would have to make this fight dirty, like keep it close and, and tight, where Izzy doesn't have that six, seven inches of reach on him, and he can't pick his legs apart from the outside or work those um, jabs and straights, which he was, you know, able to – he knocked Whitaker down with one of them, and he was able to, you know, accumulate some points and score <clears throat> often enough to get the nod on most rounds in my in my first – in my eyes watching the fight um, live. I didn't get to watch it a second time yet, but I will. Um, I will say this. It, it there, it's tough to win rounds consistently going backwards if you're not doing damage, and Rob wasn't doing any damage to Israel, even though he, you know, was able to control a fight. He was um at some points with grappling, he was able to, you know, keep himself out of trouble. He couldn't. He wasn't inflicting any damage. He was going backwards majority of the fight, and I think that in itself is a tough way to. Get the nod on that's that's why those judges would have it four to one because you can't. It's hard to win going backwards. I mean, unless you're causing damage, like if you can go backwards, trap your opponent into um, a dangerous situation and hurt them, then you get more, then you can get some credit there. But if you're just going backwards and playing and being more defensive, and the numbers are even, then because if you think about it, it is. It, I'm thinking about this fight again. Like I said, I wouldn't watch it once, but was there any time when Israel was in trouble? Uh, fifth round, definitely. Um, fourth round, there was some questionable strikes where Robert had some good hits. I'm not saying that he was going to be – he was drunk off any of those, but score-wise, I think fourth and fifth round are easily Robert Whitaker's um, for both of those, especially the fifth. Fifth is not no question Robert Whitaker's. But um, – my only counter to what you just said, I agree. It looks worse on the judges' scorecards going backwards all the time. And that's not going to look good for anyone. But I would argue that other than the first round, Izzy didn't do any damage either. Other than maybe one leg kick where uh, Robert Whitaker spun and showed that it hurt, affected him. I'd say that he didn't really do much damage to Robert Whitaker at all either for the rest of it, for the rest of the fight other than the first round. I believe some fighters were mentioning stuff like that on Twitter where the champion doesn't have to really do much to win the fight because as long as they're throwing some kind of strikes and moving forward, they're probably going to get the nod. I think that's what Chandler said. What's... Coming from Michael Chandler, who's just bouncing all the time. 
We got an animal on the loose. Oh, yeah. He did not like that take. She was like, you. Fuck you, Chandler. Fuck you, Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me have this real quick. Come here, man. Oh, yeah, either way. I think Whitaker yeah. will eventually come back up to fight Izzy again, possibly. If Izzy stays at 185, there's really no there's no avoiding it because Robert Whitaker is literally levels above the rest of the competition at 185 right now. Yeah, he'll he's just, already proven that he's levels above. He destroyed his last three opponents, which are the top five. So he hasn't fought Vittori yet, right? I don't think so. I think Vittori the only options he has, Costa, right? Neither yeah. one of those two. Vittori and Costa are his only options in top ten, I think. My dog does not like Amazon, guys. Um, I think Robert Whitaker's that's a, that's a good one. I think a good fight for Whitaker would be Vittori. But then it'd be like uh, the winner of that who would. What would happen? Were they going to get another title shot? I, I doubt it. Well, mm-hmm. there's there's also um, other fights that are going to come that are going to happen, and people are going to make a mark too. So there will be some contenders that are going to rise up that are going to um, be looking for a marquee fight. You know, guys like uh, like I said, like Strickland. You know, um, Chimaev bounces from seventy to one eighty five. So. There'll be, I mean, if these guys can continue to pick up victories, then there'll be guys. We talked about some middleweight contenders um, on the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, some young guys that are on the rise and a, a few shows back. And I, I really feel like this is going to work itself out by the time they get around to booking them. Because, like, there's some guys, like I said, who are streaking right now. But they don't have a na- they don't have the names under their belt. They just have the wins. They'll be getting some of these top contenders, the guys who, you know, have had their crack at the title before they get another title shot. I'm we said this already that this might not be the last meeting between Israel and Robert. Definitely mm. not. So, I think if he gets in there with Vittori. If he takes the exact same route that he took after the first loss to Izzy and just makes himself undeniable again, we'll be looking at this again maybe a year or two down the line. Yeah, I say he he gets those three wins and he he gets it. Like Marvin Vittori, Paulo Costa, and Sean Strickland. If he beats all three of those, he's right back in the title picture easily. Yeah. Uh, Because – at that point, you just knock down everyone that that could get in your way, especially uh, everyone in the top five, top ten. I mean, there's guys that are right on the outside looking in that don't have a record against any of these guys, but they're impressive. I think that uh, if Kelvin makes some changes, he can go make another run. I think he has a chance that uh, if Darren Till can get his life together, maybe. Uh, not really seeing anyone in the top 15 that are standing out now that Kevin Holland just changed divisions. Yeah, I'm currently I'm trying to look up the, the roster right now. Because hmm. I, I think, like, just thinking of it like off the top of my head, I feel like that that division did get a little, you know, a little boost in the arm. Cause I know, like, I mean, obviously Alice Pereira came out, came over, um, and that's Izzy's. He lost him twice in kickboxing, and <clears throat> you know, I feel like. Okay, so here we go. Um. Wow. Now, 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 looking at the names, you're right. I just, damn, it's it's it is the, the top fifteen. It's crowded with um names that have already been that the champs already beaten. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, he hasn't faced Chris Wyman, but he's he's number fifteen. Chris is uh, actually on the comeback tour too. He's um supposedly progressing well from that leg injury and looking for action. I thought he got a fight coming up. Don't, don't I heard that too? Or is it not true? I is mean, speculation also, or is it? Same speculation. Oh yeah, yeah. I, think, I I didn't see anything announced, but I did see him. He's he's healthy, that he's healed from the injury and wants to come back. So that's gonna be my call. We're going with Gabe's boy is gonna make a run back for the title. Okay. If you look at the rest of it, okay, so Tavares, Gaston, Hall, Till, Hermanson, um, Strickland. Out of all those names mentioned, Strickland is the only one that can make a legit like run. For the uh, in the immediate future and be considered a title contender up there with the guys we are with Jared, who's probably going to Cannoneer at number three, he's probably going to get the title, title shot because uh, both Whitaker and Vittori have already lost twice to Israel Adesanya. So, and then you got Paulo Costa at number five. You and never know, though, he's on a two fight skid as well. So, do you match up Strickland with Costa? Guy who's on a two fight skid, guy who's on a, on the rise, or do you go straight to the top and go Strickland versus Vittori or Robert? I say Vittori. Okay, actually, and then you go Whitaker Costa. Yes, but can we? Because I know at some point they were talking um, Costa was going to go up to two hundred five. Uh, he's saying I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. He says he's not fighting nobody unless it's Vittori. So well, he I, wants a rematch, right? Yeah, he wants a rematch. <laughs> but I, who is he? Like, he, you lost twice. You got dominated twice, so. Well, that well, he, okay, he got dominated by Izzy, but that fight with Vittori was good. Vittori, I think Vittori definitely won. He also definitely came in won. overweight as well. He did. Yeah. He didn't make it. Yeah, but so Vittori, he Vittori, he got too much Vittori. stuff going against him, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's only on a two-fight losing streak, and he's going to have to get back in there with someone. Johnny Walker. <laughs> at, at 205? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, Johnny Walker, has a, he has a fight already. Yeah, he does. I think he does have a fight coming up real soon, too, I think. I think he got... Uh, Saturday. My, uh, my yeah. woman. He's my fighting man. Jamal Hill. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Who did um? Oh no, Uncle Live got Santos right. Oh, I didn't know that one. I didn't know that one either. Out for. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I know. Um, I saw two of those names mentioned. Yeah, he's fighting uh Thiago Santos on the twelfth mm. of March. Okay. Woo! What happened to Blahovich and did Blahovich and um? Did they get canceled again? He was supposed to fight Rackets, right? Right. Did that get canceled? I thought it got pushed back because of injury. I just saw it was canceled about. Oh. Maybe the injury. Well, it might be canceled because it got pushed back. So it got canceled on that card. A lot of times they'll do that. So who's uh is Tashera getting Yuri? Yuri? Yes. Mm-hmm. I believe that's uh they're pushing for that one in Brazil. Okay. Trying. Yeah, they're trying. I don't know how their things are, their restrictions and whatnot. I don't know. The greedy part of me is perfectly happy with the way that they're doing things right now, just because they keep coming back to Florida. They should just make uh, Jackson go to their base. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. I'm cool with it. They should make Jacksonville their base for the pay per views and Orlando the base for the fight nights. Yeah, man. East for the um that could be um UFC East. Right here in right. Florida. <laughs> we open up I'm a uh, performance institute down there too. Or up yes. here. Up here. North Florida, man. South Florida always getting all love, man. Put let's get something for Duval. Come on, man. That'd be pretty sick. 
Yeah, put it like a put it like we got space. Come on, put it right in like St. John's or something or Performance Institute. Put a piano. Put Cecil Field. <laughs> they got you got little space. Jacksonville's big, so mm-hmm. got plenty of places. Um. So what's next for Izzy then? Do you think um we talked about a little bit about him and his matchup with uh. Jared Jer- Cannonier, which is the, the seemingly the next fight. I, I know. That's the, fight. that's the only one that makes sense. It makes sense. That doesn't always mean it um comes to fruition, though. I know Jared, Jared wants it. Izzy already said it. Yeah. So it's just a matter of ironing up details. But do you give Jared any real shot, Mark? Any real shot? Legit shot. Does Jared have a shot? In your mind, right now, there's always a puncher's chance, but outside of a puncher's chance, outside of a puncher's chance, it's light, not not a great one in my head. I give him the he has power in his hands, like as we talked about earlier, he has that that stopping power, um, and I think he has more weight. And size than Robert Whitaker coming down from heavyweight. So, if there's any type of chance for him, like we alluded to earlier, dirty boxing is the way to go. And I think he can weigh on Izzy a lot more against the cage. And I think that's where he can shine. So, I think that would be his best bet. I don't really see him as a takedown threat at all. This is going to be a completely striking match, maybe grappling against the cage. Okay. Hey, go with the theme of uh, Saturday. Throw them elbows at him. Okay. I think he could do some damage to his legs. Because if you remember in the Whitaker fight with Cannoneer, he tore up his legs in the first round. Uh, his legs wait, were wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Whitaker? No. Cannoneer. Um, yeah. Tore up Whitaker's legs? Yeah. If you, if you remember the first Whitaker's round, legs. his his no, it was real bad. It was real bad. <laughs> it was really bad. Even though he okay. lost that fight, Whitaker made the proper adjustments in rounds two and three because I believe it was a three round fight, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I believe so. It was co main event, to, I think, uh, Habib and Dustin Poirier. Mm. I, I believe. I could be wrong. But was that fight on? I think so. But the well, damage he did to the legs, I feel, is good enough to where. If he could do that to Izzy, it's very, very possible from there he could get a takedown, put his weight on him, maybe hold him up against the cage because he won't be as elusive as usual because of the damage to the legs. That's how I could see him winning. Okay. Maybe a mixture of both. Yeah. Don't forget Izzy has been knocked out before. Yes, yes, he has. Those that guy's on. That man is on the roster too. That guy is currently on the roster. Um, here's my take. I think there's something about this fight for real that makes me. Feel, I feel that Jared has a real shot. Um, I know Izzy is a phenomenal kickboxer. He's great at distance management, and he's – I think he's the best, the biggest star in the sport right now. One thing about him that separates him from everyone else is his ability to spot weaknesses, exploit them, and set traps for his opponents. He keeps them frozen in place in front of him oftentimes or going backwards with threats. Uh I don't think the thing about Jared is I don't know if he'll fall into that. And that's what makes me think that he has a real shot. Cause there's a lot of, there's some guys who they might not be technically better, but they just have that dog in them. You know, like, and that's, that's kind of what we saw when Izzy, not Israel, I saw you saw with Silva, when he faced uh, Chris Wyman, Wyman wasn't afraid of Silva. So like the things that would freeze other guys in place wouldn't work on him. And I think that's what I see um, out of Cannoneer. He's just not afraid. Like, he doesn't have that 
he doesn't have to do anything to nullify. He's just gonna come in there and try to fight. He might he might get his ass whooped. He might get knocked the fuck out. But he's gonna fight. And it's not it's not gonna be some I'm gonna slow you down and try to like neutralize you. No, it's, I'm trying to do damage. And that's where I think Calvin had the most success against Izzy. Is Calvin was just not afraid. He was willing to trade. He like, I'll take a few of yours to give you one of mine. And that ended up being one of Izzy's toughest fights. And everyone who tried to mimic that got fucked up because Izzy adjusted. And so everybody trying to mimic that whole Calvin strategy ended up getting bodied. But I don't think that's a, I don't necessarily think it's a bad strategy because, like, well, I mean, what are you going to do? Just wait and let him beat you in points? What, do you, what other choice do you have? What do you have? Like, you... Well, I, I say that alluding to the fight that just happened, another thing that you could do is Izzy's his counter striker. He wants you to rush in. He wants you to come in there just like that. So what you can do is exactly what Robert Whitaker did, which is make him come to you, fight on your back foot. If you can fight on your back foot a lot better, then you could actually win that fight because he he's not as aggressive coming forward. He's a counter striker. Um, the the problem I think Whitaker had in that is Whitaker's not a backwards fighting type of guy. He was trying to be something that he's not always. So if you get a guy that's maybe like a Darren Till type matchup who likes to counter on the back foot also. That could be an interesting way to knock out Izzy. I, I, I see your point. However, it's like it's really difficult to hurt a guy if you're like if you're playing that like a uh, counter game, unless they like you said, they're offensive and they're leaving openings. That's one thing mm-hmm. Izzy doesn't do, is he doesn't leave himself open often. That's why he seems so calculated in his approach whenever he's um, up against other strikers, it's like it's it's almost as if like he's wait. They're both waiting for the other guy to make a mistake, and yeah, and I, I don't know if that's the right move either because you, you got to overcome so much reach to be able to land anything. That's why he's always you're always in no man's land if you're waiting for him, right? Because he got he yeah. can hit you before you can hit him. The the danger like. The other point in going backwards that way is, like, if you can get him to come forward like that, then you can do what Robert Whitaker did in the the fifth round, which was Izzy was throwing a jab, a straight jab, flip the jab, and then you're in on him, which is exactly what Robert Whitaker was doing beautifully Mm -hmm. in that sense. So that would be the, like I said, if there's somebody that's better at fighting on their back foot. Like, that's why I use Darren Till as an example. He's a lot better at fighting going backwards on his back foot. Robert Whitaker usually goes forward. Robert Whitaker is usually about pressure. Yeah. But Combination. he's tried to be something that he's not, which was a good strategy against Izzy, but it's not fully him. So if I think someone like Jared, who's going to be backing up and maybe – Catch him with one of those heavy shots. That's a better shot. It's yeah. just a strategy that could work. Yeah, it's all theory. For sure. I mean, yeah. Like, look, this, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to figure out a way to make this fight make sense because you know it's going to be a huge. Jared's going to be a huge dog. Let's be real. Robert Whitaker closed at minus three hundred versus Izzy, and. MMA math doesn't work. Yeah. But the for betters, for Vegas, the odds makers, they're gonna be looking at exactly the things that um the, the fights that Jared had, the matchups that um he I mean he lost to Whitaker. He, he, he got bodied by Whitaker, and they made Whitaker um a minus uh, 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 Whitaker was a, a big dog against Izzy. Whitaker's a former title holder, probably the best guy. In the division, not name Izzy, and he was minus three hundred. What's what's Jared going to open at? What's he going to close at? You know what I mean? I think Jared well, opens at no less than four minus four hundred. Yeah, it was 
thinking about around that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Plus 400 for Cannoneer and minus 400 for Izzy? No, no. It's, it'll probably be minus 400 for Izzy. Yeah. And fuck, Cannoneer could be anywhere. He could probably be plus 540 or something. Plus 560. Jesus. Yeah, he, could be a, he could be easily a big, like a 5 to 1, 6 to 1. I'm yeah. trying to give him a little more credit than that, but yeah. I am too. I'm just saying that. I don't know. Look, I know the numbers won't agree with my opinion. Right. I think, like we we saw uh, we caught when we, when Juliana Pena faced off with Amanda Nunes. I know we're gonna beat this to death, but we all thought she was a live dog. I did at least. I know Mosey. I know you did too. I'm pretty sure Mark was like, yeah, yeah, because it felt, felt like even though she's what she came in, what she, I think she closed that. Similar, like what minus six or seven? She was a pretty it, big dog. She was, was a pretty real big. big dog. I think she might have been. I know it, it was at least. Like, it wasn't uh, like plus a thousand. It was probably like plus six hundred. Yeah, it was. It, it was at least um plus five. So no, no, come here, come here. Okay. Got um, a special guest today. Alex is like. <laughs> She, she, anything that moves, she barks. It was here. Yeah. Ow. But yeah, I, I think Izzy does. He's the guy. He's the guy right now. He's the champ, and he, he's also making a case for uh, more than that because he's starting to lap around the division, and now we can start having some legacy conversation when it comes to Israel Adesanya. Do you think he is there yet? As because obviously one of the best to ever do it was in his same weight class in Anderson Silva. And Anderson has how many title defenses? And ten. Ten? Ten, ten title defenses. And Izzy's at four and a half. Four and a half. Depends yeah. who, who you're asking. Yeah. If you ask if you ask Izzy, it's five. Yep. Yes. If you ask the UFC, it's four. And I mean he did fight. Whitaker for the title after getting the interim title from Kelvin. So I watched say a half. But so, um so it's four and one. We'll we'll give him four and one. He defended the interim title once and he <laughs> and defended the regular title four times. So it's four and one. Right. And look, he's still what is he's what, thirty two now, thirty three? Let's find out. So he's right there in that in that athletic prime that they call it for MMA. Mixed martial arts, usually your prime is somewhere around 28 to like 35. 31. 31? 31? Okay. 31. Oh, yeah, he's young. So let's say he has another four years in him of being the same top tier Cream of the crop, striker at middleweight. Do you think he passes Silva as far as the, uh, being considered a goat of middleweight is concerned, or is that too soon to do the Jordan Kobe comparisons? Mm. If he would have won the light heavyweight title, he he probably would already have that status. Honestly, so you think he's already there? No, he needs a few more defenses, then we could start talking about it. He's on his way, though. So, are we talking about just that middle? Just the greatest of all time type status, or are we talking about just title defenses and beating middleweight the middleweight record? Well, just being the best at middleweight. Because if you're talking about greatest of all time, I think Izzy does have a, a long way to go. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about just like guys, because like um. That list for me is a pretty short list. I agree. Um, and he can be among those names for sure. I mean, he only has one loss um, in his entire mixed martial arts career, and that was him fighting Blahovich at light heavyweight. So, um, and it's not necessarily about just the, the, the record. It's more about the opponents and the dominance mm-hmm. shown over those opponents to me. And Izzy, like I said, him beating Robert Whitaker twice, that's really big for me because I, I I hold Whitaker in very high regard. 
That's and a, even even though it was a boring fight, the Yoel Romero win is held at a high regard for me too. Right. So and, he, and if you look at how he dismantled Costa at the time, Costa was considered the most scary guy at middleweight. I mean, yeah. Costa Costa pre Izzy was the boogeyman. Costa pre Izzy was taken over for Yoel. Yeah, I mean, he was the even in his fight with Yoel. That he was the guy who was coming forward, um, charging at Yoel when no one would engage with Yoel. Really, mm-hmm. everyone else was game plan, counter strategies. There was no fight to Yoel. You were going to survive and try to win on points. Test his cardio. No one was trying to test his gangster. Costa was testing his gangster. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Costa before Izzy was a different guy, and now I mean he's. And even he's not the same anymore after that, after getting dismantled. Izzy put on the masterclass versus Costa. So he the the wins he had has are, I mean, they're all they're all strong. I mean, he's cleaned out the whole division. If you think about it. I mean, the only guys not in his reach are just they just ain't that they just aren't good enough to get there. They keep getting bought. You know what I mean? The guys that yeah. he hasn't already beat. I mean, he has no no Uriah Hall, right? No Darren Till. No Jack Hermanson. No Chris Wyden. Kevin Holland left the division. Yeah. And, but those there. are all guys that just can't get up and can't make right. it win, or get it done when it counts. Well, they can't win enough to get close to the title. So right. not, not his fault. Um, the rest of the roster outside of Sean Strickland, he's already beaten them. <clears throat> He's beating everybody else on the list. Whoa, sorry. Jerry Cannonier too. He has not. He has not beaten Jerry Cannonier, and he has not beaten Sean Strickland, two guys who are surging in that middleweight division. Um, but everything else is rematches. Depending on Strickland's uh, next matchup, if he wins, do you think he gets a title shot after – the Cannoneer Izzy fight, which is probably going to happen. If, 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 let's say hypothetically, Cannoneer um, Adesanya happen in July or June, right? At International like Fight wants. Week. Like, yeah, like he wants. Let's say it's business as usual for the champ, right? And he uh, takes care of business, gets the dub on Jerry Cannoneer. I feel like Strickland's only a fight away, yeah? I mean, he's he's one real strong win away from getting right in there. Because if he if he were to get either Vittori or Whitaker, and it's impressive, that's a title shot to me. Yeah, one hundred percent. If he beats anyone in the top five in his next fight, he's one hundred percent a title shot. I don't I don't right. think there's really a big argument on that because not only uh, is it there's just Everything else would be a rematch, or yeah, there's just there's no other interesting fights for Adesanya at the time. So yeah, it'd be easily a title shot. Mo, do you but, think it's do you think it's even possible that Strickland can face off with Brunson, Brunson or Costa at all? Give it like they're right, they're directly above him in the top five. If he like, fights any of those guys and wins, I think he's going to get a title shot. Okay. For him, title shot for whoever he fights, no. Even if they win. They would yeah. still have to win more. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Like All they will be doing is stealing his shine, stealing his momentum, yep. because mm-hmm. he has all the momentum going forward. However, he's outside of the top five. He's right outside of the top five at six. So, Mark, do you see anybody in that on that list of names – who out of that list of names gives you the most confidence that they can steal that shine? That the, the the trade stops here if they face Sean Strickland. Who do you think out of that list beats Sean the easiest? The easiest, I would say Robert Whitaker. Okay, but to be honest, there there's no easy matchup there. Like. It's. I think that every single one of them can steal his shine, but 
I think it's going to be a tough, tough matchup for all of them. I do think that Sean Strickland beats Costa and Brunson. I think Marvin Vittori would be the toughest matchup for him, other than Whitaker. Personally. So you think one – well, obviously, they're, um, Whitaker and Vittori are both one and one two. One and two. Yeah. And then a win over those two guys is pretty much automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, you punch your ticket. Mo, you have a, a, a – what do you think about Strickland's matchup possibilities with top five? If he fights Vittori, I'm there for their entertainment on that one. Mm-hmm. On the pre-fight trash talk, this is going to be great. Costa, I don't know. I I don't know what's going on with him. And Brunson said he's only got one more fight left in him. So wherever he fights, that's his retirement fight. I would like to see him go out on top. So hopefully it'll be somebody that's not going for the title. Hmm. What about a uh what about Weidman then? Brunson Weidman, because like that'll give Did they ever fight? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, 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 I don't know. So that's a great question. It would hard. To, it would be hard to think that they never did. Now remember, Weidman. He he will get injured and be out for a really long time. I know, but Brunson was around forever. So well, it doesn't look it like a- they ever did. I, I I just didn't remember them ever fighting, but I think Never, obviously yeah, they haven't fought. What that would that if that's if he has one last fight, I, I'm trying to think of who would that make the most sense against, and not a lot of names just bring, show, jump off the page except like because <clears throat> Chris would be a, it's a comeback fight for Chris. It's a it's a one guy going, one guy leaving. But let's be real. It, Chris is at the bottom of the top 15. If he loses another fight, he's going to be talking about like leaving too. So, I was about to say, that's a good retirement fight for both of them. Right. But one guy, yeah. So like the only difference is, you know, a win for Chris is huge given the rankings. So he has a lot to gain in that fight. But also, you know, obviously the stakes, if the stakes are that high to go up, they have to be that high to go down. And if he, uh, if Brunson goes out puts his, with a win, puts his gloves in the cage, that wouldn't be so good for Chris either. So I think that'd be a pretty good fight um, for uh, Derek's last fight if he is, in fact, considering retirement. You know, I want to go a different route. I think that Brunson's last fight should have. Decent notability to it and title implications somewhat to it, or at least a shot at another title run. I think it should be Brunson versus Gaslam. Okay. They've never fought either, so why not? Gaslam's on his kind of slump right now. He's fighting um, in Jacksonville. Yeah, he's fighting in Jacksonville, but I mean Brunson won't fight for a while, anyways. What's the matchup for uh, Gaslam? Uh, what's his name? Andre Muniz? No, uh, I can't say the guy's name. I'm above, I'm above, something like that. It won't let me click on it. Close enough. I'm Evolve. Close I'm enough. Evolve. Yeah. That made me... The Sourdine? It's a long last. That's a lot of consonants. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even going to try the first name. <laughs> N-A-S-S-O-U-R-D-I-N-E. The Sourdine. Nas Sourdine. <laughs> Sutter then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um well he's at, he well then he has he's a dance partner already then. So well, that's what I'm saying. That's not too far away though. And Brunson's not gonna fight for a while. Uh you think it's it for this year for him? 
Mm, probably until the end of the year. One more at the end of the year. Okay. But I think Gaslam can fight that fight and have one at the end of the year also. Mm. Okay. Um, anybody, do you see anybody? I'll be mean, obviously, like we said before, um, this is kind of a little, little final thoughts for Izzy. Do you see anybody that can, that has a legit shot to unseat him right now, given that he just beat Whitaker twice? He's already beat Vittori twice. Do you see anybody for real that can, that gives you like, it's not a huge favorite Adesanya when they walk out there? Into, and make that walk to the cage, or does he just own this division right now? I would. I wouldn't mind seeing a healthy Chris Weidman. I want to see how good his wrestling defense will be against somebody like Weidman. Okay, that's a fight I want to see, but I don't. I doubt that'll ever happen. I, I will be honest. I was slightly excited for Blonde Brunson to make a comeback and see how that would go. Just getting bum rush and uh, that kind of wrestling, bum rush wrestling towards Adesanya, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but that got kind of shit canned. So, um, yeah, I honestly do. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I honestly do think that if Gaslam can get some wins together, he could be a good threat to. Adesanya again too. He definitely was his toughest fight. So, a couple game plan changes that could be a definite shocker. Um, I'm just gonna say, I think he's he owns the division. I think he's the guy. Only guy that I see that. I mean, this is recency bias for sure, but. I just feel like Cannonier has a shot. Outside of that, might be a while. Might be looking at the king of the uh, middleweights for a long, for long reign the king for a while. Might be adding a lot of gems and stones to that belt. Mm, I don't see him beating uh, Silva's record, though. You'll see him beating I think six. six uh, well, let's say, it would have to get seven more defenses, right? Mm hmm. He would have to get seven more defenses. But I think, I think that the, his last couple of opponents have started to get a good read on him. So the game plans are starting to tighten up. So I, I don't know if he'll make it seven more undefeated fights before they come out with a good strategy against him. Yeah. I mean, when you get at the top, everybody's looking at you. So mm -hmm. it is harder to stay champ than it is to become champ, for sure. Yeah, the easy part's becoming champ. The hard part's staying. It's real hard to stay at the top. It's real hard. Everybody's gunning for you. Uh, to, on So seven more fights. Let's just say... If he that's two times a year for the next three or four years, then I'll put him at what, 35 years old? 34? Yeah. 34, 35, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very doable. Doable. It is doable for sure. Especially a guy of that caliber. He's already show, he was already proven to be focused because like he one thing about Izzy is he does show off. He does um you know, the, the theatrics and things that sell tickets, but he also does the homework. He's in there studying film, breaking down film, still working on skills, improving. So I think he deserves to be where he is as champion. Um, it's not just an uh, amazing physical skill set. He also has uh, everything going on upstairs as well. Did you see what he did at the start of the fight when they had the little stare down? <laughs> the, rock, the rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Only he was like, something like that. <laughs> no fist bump. He was like, rock beats, paper, paper, beats, paper beats rock. Uh, he wasn't the first to do it, though, so I can't give him too much credit for that. Who What's his first? name? Did that? What was, what was that guy's name? The guy who used to do all the crazy uh, weigh ins. 
the guy who came in as the Hulk that gave uh that's gave, uh, what's his name? Flowers, what's his that's yeah, I uh cute Cootie Lava. Yeah, he did that during one of the pre fights too. <laughs> so okay. I can't give Izzy full credit. He wasn't the first. Well he did it in the uh in the cage or outside? He of did it in the cage. Okay. He did it in the cage. So, right. Like I said, well, I can't give him full credit, but it was entertaining. Nice to see that callback. For me, it was a callback. <laughs> well, to me, it was like, I thought it was uh, in the, for the moment that it, it happened, like, you know, it was a big stare down, huge rematch. And he's just like, still, like, I'm not going to let you even get momentum or any sense of victory, even if we just fucking bump and fist. You know what I mean? That's funny. Uh, Do you think that Robert Whitaker actually noticed what happened, though? Not maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe he know he didn't get fist bumped. You know, yeah. niggas, you go for you go for fist bump. Some guy like stick shifts you. He grabs your hand and fucking whatever. You know, you didn't get I'm, fist bumped. So psychologically, I had to play some role. In my head, like if I'm being that serious with you or whatever, and I have my fist out there and I'm staring at you in the eyes, I don't know. I I would just. I think I'd be more confused, be like, you don't know how to fist bump, you wanted to just grab my hand. Like I I think that would be me not really just going straight to rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> well he did he did the, the, the motion, he's like rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> but he was staring at him in the eyes. He wasn't looking at his hands. He just had his hand out there. Maybe that's why he got jabbed so much. You can't look at his eyes. His eyes can't hit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to call it? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Call it. Hey man, if you like this content, uh, ladies, gentlemen, whatever you may, um, like and like and subscribe. Hit us up in the comments for uh, any feedback. Ashy Knuckles MMA on Twitter. I'm your host B Woods. My boy Mark G, right hand man Mosey P in the crib, and we gonna zip this up and zip it out. It out.